The River Between is a 1965 novel by the East African author Naguhi Wa Thiongo. Naguhi was born in Kenya in 1938, and he began his writing career as a playwright. At an African Writers' Conference in 1962, he showed his first two novels, then in draft form, to the Nigerian author Chinwa Achebe, and Achebe arranged for them to be published in the Heinemann African Writers' Series, of which he was the then advisory editor. The River Between was the second of those two novels. The first, Weep Not Child, appeared in 1964 and is nowadays generally regarded as a classic of African literature. Both books deal with the social rifts caused by British colonialism and the tensions leading up to, in the case of The River Between, and during, in the case of its predecessor, the Mau Mau Uprising, which began in 1952. The River Between was originally entitled The Black Messiah after a prophecy made by the protagonist's father, who was the chief elder in his tribe. A man shall rise and save the people in their hour of need. Part of the novel consists in an uncertainty about who this prophecy applies to, and charts attempts by unscrupulous people to claim it, but Nagugi probably intends the reader to conclude that it properly applies to the protagonist, a young man of considerable integrity called Waiaki. The novel's published title derives from its setting, two rival villages on two ridges between which a river flows. Both villages derive essential sustenance from the river, and it's the setting for many of the key scenes. This is partly a love story on the Romeo and Juliet mould of a young couple doomed by internecine politics. But the river is also the setting for the mass circumcision ritual, which forms the bedrock of the local tribal culture. It's a culture which the Christians, led by a former tribal elder called Joshua, are trying hard to eradicate. Joshua is a fanatic, and the interest of the novel lies partly in its methodical description of the way in which his intolerance, plus the egregious injustice of colonial taxation, land grabs and sanctimonious interference, leads to radicalization on all sides. In the end, those who want to defend what they now call the purity of the tribe become as narrow-minded as everyone else. The tribe stops being an organic thing and becomes instead a reified, sacred ideal. Part of that ideal revolves around what the novel calls female circumcision, but which in the 21st century and in the West is more likely to be called FGM, female genital mutilation. At the end of the novel, there are reports that some of the more extreme defenders of the tribal ideal are abducting young women and forcing them to undergo the procedure. Nagugi's own position is probably best represented by Waiaki. Waiaki grows up to become a teacher and essentially a peacemaker. He wants to unite the two villages and reconcile the Christians and the traditionalists. He sees education, not violence, as the key to a better future. But of course, the odds are stacked against him. As the son of his tribe's most respected elder, he's respected by default, but that inspires envy, and one of the other elders makes it his mission to discredit him and lead the people to war. As so often in straightened circumstances, especially when people are frightened and angry, moderate voices lose their appeal, and finally, only the extremists remain. This is an excellent novel, and as an analysis of encroaching intolerance in an uncertain world, it's as relevant today as it's ever been. In the end, Nagugi arguably takes the side of rational progressivism. Why Arki, as a young man, oughtn't to be as wise as he is. His antagonist, the senior elder, oughtn't to be as petty and egotistical. Tradition, whilst important, is as prone to moral limitations as anything else education probably really is the key.